Hello everyone and welcome to QuickMed where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In this video we will be going over pneumococcal vaccinations including the old and newer recommendations so let's get to it. Pneumococcal vaccinations target Streptococcus pneumoniae which is a gram-positive encapsulated bacteria. The term encapsulated bacteria here refers to bacteria that are covered with a polysaccharide capsule and this is in addition to the other membranes that bacteria have. An our immune system responds to encapsulated bacteria through a process known as opsonization, which you can see in this diagram here. In opsonization, an opsonin, or an antibody in this case, binds to a foreign pathogen, marking it for destruction by phagocytes like macrophages. And when we administer a vaccination like the pneumococcal vaccination, we're basically encouraging an antibody response so that if a person comes in contact with a pathogen like Streptococcus pneumoniae, they already have a mechanism in place to clear that pathogen. With pneumococcal vaccination, there are two vaccination types to know about. These are your polysaccharide type and your conjugate type. As the name implies, the polysaccharide type consists of pneumococcal capsular polysaccharides. There is only one available formulation, which contains 23 pneumococcal polysaccharides. This is known as pneumovax or PPSV23. On the other hand, the conjugate type consists of a capsular polysaccharide that is covalently linked or conjugated to a protein. With the pneumococcal conjugate vaccines, we have more than one type of vaccination, which we will go over in the next slide. The top three vaccines listed here are your pneumococcal conjugate vaccines, which is why they start with PCV. The numbers indicate the number of serotypes that they cover against. At the very bottom here, we have our PPSV23, which stands for pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. And the number here, again, indicates the number of serotypes that it provides coverage against. And keep in mind the brand names that are also listed on this slide because these vaccinations are often referred to by their brand names. Before we go over the old and new recommendations, let's go over a little bit of history here. In the 1980s and 1990s, the Pneumovax or your PPSV23, which again is your polysaccharide vaccine, was the only available pneumococcal vaccine. So as you can imagine, vaccination was pretty simple at that time. But with the approval of the conjugate vaccines, guidelines became a little bit more complex because you have to begin considering the age of the patient as well as underlying comorbidities. So this leads us to our older guidelines, which consisted of your Prevnar 13 and your Pneumovax. With these previous guidelines, there are various factors to consider. First off was age. Was the patient 65 years or older or between the age of 19 to 65 years old? And then physicians had to consider three other categories, chronic medical conditions, immunosuppression, and other underlying conditions which we will go over. Now let's see what falls under these three categories. With chronic medical conditions, this included any chronic heart, lung, or liver disease, diabetes, alcoholism, and smoking status, interestingly enough. Immunosuppression consisted of HIV, sickle cell disease, any malignancy, asplenia, and chronic kidney disease. There's an asterisk around CKD and smoking status for you to keep this in mind because they might not be the first things that come to mind when we consider these categories. And then our other underlying conditions here include a cochlear implant or a cerebrospinal fluid leak because these both increase risk of meningitis, which streptococcus pneumoniae can also contribute to. So let's now take a look at what these vaccination recommendations actually are. For a healthy adult, one without any of the risk factors that we just mentioned, the only recommendation would be the PPSV23 or Pneumovax at 65 years of age. Now for a patient with any chronic medical disease that we mentioned previously, the recommendation would be a Pneumovax between the age of 19 to 64 years old, and then a second Pneumovax at 65 years and up. And these would have to be five years apart at least. If a patient has an underlying condition like a cochlear implant or a cerebrospinal fluid leak, the recommendation would be to administer a Prevnar 13 at 19 to 64 years of age, followed by Pneumovax, and these would have to be at least 8 weeks apart. And then at 65 years and up, a second dose of the Pneumovax would be administered, and this would have to be at least 5 years apart from the last time Pneumovax was given. And if a patient is immunocompromised with any conditions that we described earlier, the recommendation would be to administer Prevnar 13 first, followed by Pneumovax at least 8 weeks later, and then a second Pneumovax 5 years later within the age range of 19 to 64 years of age. And then at 65 years and up, a third dose of the Pneumovax would be administered, and again, this would have to be at least 5 years apart from the last time Pneumovax was ever administered. In 2021, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, also known as the ACIP, approved two new pneumococcal vaccinations, the PCV15 and PCV20, which made new recommendations much easier. And you'll see why this is the case in just a minute. 
In any healthy adult, the new recommendation is that they can receive the PCV20 alone or PCV15 followed by the Pneumovax vaccination. And these two vaccinations can be administered at least one year apart. And now what's really nice is that for everyone else, regardless of whether they're immunocompromised or have any other underlying conditions or other chronic medical conditions, the vaccination recommendations are the exact same. The only thing here is that if a patient is truly immunocompromised, they can receive the two vaccine series a little bit sooner than one year apart, but otherwise, the recommendations are the exact same. And the reason why Pneumovax is administered after PCV15 here is to provide immunity against an increased number of serotypes. And if you're just doing some quick math here, you might also realize that the second option does offer coverage against an increased number of serotypes compared to the PCV20 alone. And that is correct. But as of now, this difference does not seem to be clinically meaningful, which is why the recommendations stand as they do. We'll see if anything changes over time, however. All right, everyone, that was a lot of information. So feel free to rewatch any parts of the video if you feel like you need to revisit that topic. But as we always do, let's end with a practice question. Which of the following patients would be recommended to receive Pneumovax today? And remember, our Pneumovax is our PPSV23, our polysaccharide vaccine. Let's run through these answer choices one by one. So we have A, 72-year-old female with a history of rheumatoid arthritis and has never received a pneumococcal vaccine as an adult. Because this patient is above the age of 65 and has never received any pneumococcal vaccine, she would be eligible for the Pneumovax at this time. Now for answer choice B, a 48-year-old male who has well-controlled diabetes and has never received a pneumococcal vaccine as an adult. So this patient here is not 65 years of age, but he does have a chronic medical condition here, diabetes, so he would be eligible for Pneumovax at this time. If you recall from our chart previously, with any chronic medical condition, patients receive Pneumovax between 19 to 64 years of age, and then a second dose at 65 years and up. Answer choice C is a 68-year-old male who has a left ventricular ejection fraction of 40% and received a dose of Pneumovax six years ago. So this patient is 65 years and up, also has a chronic medical condition, which is chronic heart disease here, and he also received Pneumovax six years ago. If you recall from our chart, the two doses of Pneumovax need to be given at least five years apart, so this patient is actually eligible for his second dose of the Pneumovax vaccine. D, 32-year-old female who smokes a pack of cigarettes per day and has never received a pneumococcal vaccine as an adult. If you remember in our chart, cigarette smokers are considered to have chronic medical conditions per the previous recommendations, and so this patient would be eligible for the Pneumovax. And then finally, choice E, an 84-year-old male who has asthma and received a dose of Pneumovax 10 years ago. So this patient last received the Pneumovax 10 years ago, so he would have been 74 at that time. And because he was above the age of 65 years, he is not eligible for a second dose because he only needs one dose of the Pneumovax at 65 years and up. All right, everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave any questions down below. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.